My name is Linda Shuttleworth. I'm the administrative assistant in the astronomy department. I've been here since 1980. I started working on the man machine, measuring stars for Dr. Upgren for his research project on parallax stars. They were tracking the movements of the stars through the skies. Most plates had three exposures. If it was not an, a really clear night, sometimes they would only do two exposures uh, that gave them um, you know, a better chance of having a successful plate that could be measured. This is the man measuring machine that I used. I would get the plates out of the stack. So to mark up my plates, I would put them on the light table, emulsion side down. And then I would take my pen and they gave me a um, diagram of the stars that they wanted. And then I would just circle each star and number them and draw lines from one to the other because it was easier to observe. And I had to make sure when I was marking them that I wasn't going into one of the exposures. This was the main star they were interested in. That was called the pi star. And then the reference stars, they numbered, and I marked them up. And this particular star had 21 reference stars. Some didn't have that many. Then I would start my day by turning the machine on. I won't keep it on because it's very loud. I would then take my plate and very carefully Okay, I would put it in the plate holder like this. And then I would start measuring from the pi star that's in the middle and I would move move the wheel this this one is frozen so we can't do it but this would move this platform so that I could measure it. This had crosshairs in here, and I would see the crosshairs on this so that I could see where the crosshairs were in the star. As I centered each star, I pressed this pedal here, and it would punch onto an IBM card. It was really important when they measured that they got these as round as they could. That meant holding the telescope really, really still so they could do that. If the telescope traveled, then you would get kind of a, a smudged image. And that's very hard to center a crosshair in an oval type image. Um, sometimes we had what I called bar belts, which would be like and, and kind of a line in the middle. And those were almost impossible to, um, those plates weren't able to be measured because you didn't know where the star actually was. So I would measure the, the pi star and then all the reference stars in sequential order. I would then turn this 180 degrees and I would do the same thing again, starting with the pi star and then all the reference stars. And then they would take all these cards after I finished that particular series, and they would take them over to the science tower and they would put them through a card reader. And then they got the data that they needed in order to be able to do the research that they were doing. I measured on this machine from August of 1980 till 1987. It was ideal for me. I, was, um, I had three young children. I could make my own hours. I worked six hours a day, but I could work them any time I wanted to. Um, sometimes I came in like at five o'clock in the morning and worked so that I would be home with my kids. When I stopped measuring in 1987, the plates were measured at Yale on an automated um, program. One of our former grad students took the plates down and they were, it was all automated down there. So this machine has not been used since 1987.